here is what we do as far as resource development from a British Columbia point of view. And not only uh, explain what we do, but also give us an opportunity to be part of the whole collaboration as well. And so what we've been uh, doing, like, so I've been doing this for a lot of years um, and have been part of, you know, the early days of the Alberta Conference and, and development here as well. Um, and so basically it's been fun to watch the evolution in both provinces and stuff like that. And I've actually kind of crossed the border as well and, and done some contracts for Chinook's Edge and, and worked with folks there and, and so on over the years. Um, and so while we watch uh, both provinces evolve from an online learning, distance learning, blended learning, what have you, um, some of the interesting things that have been happening, a lot of times uh, the, from, on the Alberta side, it was uh, great to watch and, and there's a, you know, a lot of provincial involvement and some really things that, really cool things and development pieces that would come up that, uh, you know, we would be in awe of and think, wow, if only, and, um, you know, and things kind of evolved quite differently. The one thing that we kind of had going for us with, from a British Columbia point of view, is from the early days, um, the, the ministry kind of stood back and it was the district's responsibility to uh, do resources. So we had a lot of consistency and a lot of collaboration over the years. And so <coughs> basically, we're uh, BC Learning Network is, is 20 years of that collaboration. So really, to explain the structure of it, um, all of the districts, because each district is responsible for offering, so policy was put out there so that uh, districts can offer to students anywhere in the province. And so there was certainly a drive for districts to get involved in online education and distance learning in the early days and merging more toward the blended learning these days. But um, from a resource point of view, nobody felt comfortable uh, starting off and saying that we can make really good online resources by ourselves, right? You know, many districts, many of the big ones tried to do it by themselves, but everybody eventually said, look, as a group with everybody uh, contributing to the pot and having a development leadership in place, uh, there's really no other way to compete with that. And so uh, within uh, BC, all the districts who run online programs are part of the consortium, and even a number of districts that don't run online um, pieces are. Even those who don't have an online program or a DL program, quite a few of those are also part of it as well, uh, just to encourage the blended learning within their district. So recently, the discussion has been. Uh, Alberta districts looking and saying, you know, that kind of consistency is interesting to us. And so we've had two, so last year, uh, uh, Bruce opened it up with the idea that we can take on some Alberta districts, and so two have jumped on so far, Rocky View and Chinook's Edge at this point. Uh, we've had quite a number of, of other divisions kind of uh, sniffing around and asking questions and stuff like that with the, with the possibility of this summer. So it, the idea of us kind of expanding into, um, into a more Western province kind of idea uh, has us uh, planning the uh, changing of a name to the Western uh, Canada uh, Learning Network. And so basically what I'm here to do is just tell you about the system and, and what we have in place and uh, you know, just give you the opportunity to look around. If you want to, on the BC Learning Network site, just bcln.ca if you want to get there fast, or bclearningnetwork.com. Um, for the rest of the day, you certainly can go in there whether you're a member or not. Usually I control, you know, just so we don't have everybody in the world making accounts on that. Uh, I just, the members, I identify the format of their email address and then you can make an account if you fall into this category. But I removed all that for today, so just go in and make yourself an account if you wish. Uh, that will allow you to preview all of the materials that are on there. You can take a look around, get familiar with uh, what we do. Maybe I can just speak to the structure of what we do. We're a nonprofit. Our goal is to share, and it's really meant as a grassroots effort from, from the teacher's perspective. So all of our development involves teachers or some technicians and programmers in support of teachers. 
we hire anywhere from uh, 25 to 35, 40 teachers annually to focus in on particular areas of growth that we want to develop. Uh, and we refresh our courses uh, probably every two years uh, at the longest. Um, uh, we're going through a massive transformation in British Columbia right now. Uh, our K-9 curriculum is completely new and has been implemented for one year. Next year we'll be implementing a new uh, grade 10 curriculum. And then uh, the ministry just announced uh, on uh, Tuesday that they're delaying the grade 11 and 12 implementation phase until the year following, so that's 2020. And um, so part of our, our planning revolves around that schedule in the BC context, but in the Alberta context, our plan is to basically share the 20 years of development that we have uh, with the idea with our colleagues where we feel we'll also benefit from a lot of the knowledge and experience in Alberta, um, predominantly through the group uh, known as the, the Moodle Hub. Uh, we've been working with uh, Dirk in particular and also with Kevin and uh, some other of your colleagues possibly uh, to uh, share what we do uh, moving forward. Yeah, so basically from a, a curriculum point of view, uh, as Bruce has pointed out, we're in a bit of a transition right now. Um, you know, from listening to a lot of conversations related to the Alberta uh, upcoming curriculum changes, it sounds uh, perhaps like we're uh, a little bit ahead from that curriculum development point of view. Uh, the latest curriculum changes that we've seen um, are certainly more towards a personalized learning approach uh, more project-based learning and certainly competencies. And so that's uh, the latest developments for us have been in those areas, uh, creating a lot of projects and uh, making a more of a student choice kind of format. Um, so all of our courses are laid out in a similar way. Part of the, uh, there, there are lots of courses out there that you can find, but one of the things that we found uh, that was really popular um, was having a certain consistency in all those courses. So we don't just say, uh, teachers, you know, send us your stuff and we'll post it, and that's, uh, you know, what VCLN stuff is. Basically, when we hire uh, people to work on the courses, it's part of a development team. And so all of them require a certain amount of understanding of where we're going with as the team, um, and then the training happens as we go. If we have some teachers that have great ideas, but technical skills aren't so great, um, we don't push them aside and we don't make that, you know, they just turn them loose on it either. So what we quite often do is pair them up with someone who's a lot stronger technically and get them involved. And so it is part of a team. And so we have people who work on databases that, you know, spend a lot of time there. We have uh, people whose focus is the video development, game development, um, you know, quite a variety of things. But all as a team, it's coordinated in order to uh, produce things that have a consistent architecture to them. Um, so just for our, to take a quick look, a lot of our courses, like I say, very similar, start off with an introductory video, um, the course outlines, and then head into the materials themselves. Um, the beginning, we go with a learning guide. It's basically an assignment with the emphasis on uh, the student working through it themselves. A variety of lessons, which within them uh, is a mix of videos, games, some JavaScript, some text, and various things like that. Um, and then, of course, the projects. Like I was saying, uh, projects are a big push right now, so we have quite a number of our developers focusing on collecting uh, the best project ideas out there. And a lot of the, um, the guidance that we give them for, for working on this is variety is key. In other words, you know, some of the projects, even in a physics unit, can be more artistic or can be, you know, uh, try and capture something that would be interesting to a wide variety of, of students um, because they're all taking this course coming from whatever background they may be take, coming from. And so lots of hands-on stuff, lots of scope, quite a variety of the projects, and that is definitely one of the big focuses these days. Um, over the years, like as I said, um, we've been kind of doing this uh, for a little over 19 years, so I always rough it off at about 20 years. Um, and so over the years, we've done a lot of work in, um, in database development. And what that allows is some teachers, uh, you know, go with the mastery of learning or have quizzes along the way uh, where they allow students to practice as much as they want. They can do a quiz multiple times. 
um, because if you have a large enough database, that doesn't become an issue, right? And also we found that uh, having immediate feedback with some of these practice areas where you have a full solution from a teacher on how they would suggest this could be laid out and have that immediately uh, when the quiz is submitted was a popular one too. So that probably cost us a couple hundred grand to get more people going in there and, and evolving those questions in the background. Um, we also have a number of people who uh, focus a lot of their time on video development. So we run a YouTube channel and uh, basically have people developing uh, a lot in the sciences, uh, more so in the maths and um, some socials and some English as well. But quite a variety of, of the videos there and you can uh, preview those on the site. Um, one area that uh, we've been fairly strong in in the past, um, but back in the day uh, we worked with uh, universities as, as well as um, uh, TELUS and Inukshuk and we had a few grants of, of stuff we were doing. Um, and we worked on a lot of games, but that was back in the day of Flash and we all know that that's getting bloody annoying for students these days, right? Um, and so one of the big projects we started on uh, about a year and a half ago and just start transitioning everything out of Flash. And so we've been converting a lot of games and building new games and everything in HTML5. And uh, you know, part of the popularity of that is you don't have the headaches in the browsers, but it's also very mobile friendly. So uh, we're getting good feedback about that. And so basically kind of a variety of games. Again, you'll see that on the site. You can play the games and uh, get your students involved. Um, since we were rebuilding a lot of the games, one of the things that we kind of took off with uh, in the game development was allowing uh, the games themselves. In other words, you look at something like this and what you're trying to display or love, it's, you know, we come up with these creative, goofy things. But anyways, um, and once you match them all, the two little spiders get together and little spider their names. So it's just <laughs> something that has a little extra incentive to try and get those kids to play it a little longer to, you know, win the game and, uh, you know, get that retention that you're aiming for. Or the balloons, try and get them before they pop in the out of the area. And so a number of these games, like this one here, when you get right down to it, it's just a matching game, right? You added a little fun to it, but in the end, it's just a matching game. It would work just as well in physics as this example, or socials, or English, or family studies, or whatever, right? If you had some matching and you just wanted the, to give the students a chance to test themselves and play around and make the spiders happy. And so, um, so what we've done with this is we've made this so that teachers themselves can make their own games. So we have a game generator, and what it does is the teacher, we just tell them you have to make five, and you call them left, one, two, three, four, and, and right, one, two, three, four. You click here, you tell us a little bit about your game and who's making it. You hit generate, and it'll make the game, and it'll spit out a little um, embed tag that you can take and put into your course, and you just made a game. Uh, the trade-off is we also get your game, right? Because now everybody else can use it. So. Um, so, for example, next Friday, and, and we will be more encouraging more districts to do it in Pro D days and stuff like that. But go ahead, have a game making day for all of your teachers, and they can, you know, think of things that, you know, what are those things that's kind of annoying for students to do? But if you added a little fun to it, they might challenge each other, and and in the end, do what you were hoping them to do, right? And so, both of these and. Uh, you know, the arrange and order, again, you know, it's a good biology one and try and, you know, win the arrange and order or try and get the, the potato to have all the accessories on it. Oh, you know what, any little fun thing like that. Again, these ones you, can be made with the generator. Um, and then there's a variety of game show ones where they try and win the game show and get points and, and so on. So, um, so that was games. So just kind of getting back to some technical aspects of, of our goals uh, recently. One of them is we had a request from a lot of the members kind of saying that they would like to, their districts would like to run a fully secure Moodle site. And so this year we're going through and we're replacing everything with secure links and stuff like that. So our media server is, is secure and so we're basically that's one of the challenges for this year. It just 
for those who don't go secure, it doesn't make any difference to them. For those who do, it just allows all the courses to run flawlessly and, and for the boards to be happy in all the districts. Um, and then again, I mentioned uh, we're challenging every teacher that's working on a course right now to be working through the course, removing all the flash. And so we gave them a, a uh, quiz generator. Open School has, which is a, an organization in BC that has a bunch of class stuff. They've agreed to work with us to all the stuff that we, we really like of theirs. Uh, they're going to attempt to get all those done in the HTML5 by the summer, so we can release with that. And also, we gave the teachers a, a few little clips of JavaScript things so they can have little quizzes along the ways as well. Um, in the end, the bottom line is uh, we're just trying to remove all the flash out of our courses, which is uh, the challenge for any online organization. It's really just modernizing through various maintenance. Uh, one other thing that uh, allows us to, um, you know, benefit uh, members is when we contact an organization and say, hey, we have a lot of members who are really interested in working uh, on, say, languages. Um, we're looking for a partnership, and basically, we don't want any money. We're just, if we arrange something and we work with you and adjust your product to suit our, our members' needs, um, and you give us preferred pricing, we'll just explain to everybody how this could fit into you know, their repertoire of tools, right? And so, yeah, they usually say, okay, well, let's talk. And then you say, well, yeah, we represent the whole province of BC and a little bit of Alberta now. And they say, oh, okay, let's work together. And, and so it, it really does have a good impact that way. Um, and so uh, Content Connections is one that we worked with with the, uh, the math materials. And the Steady Forge with the Calculus has worked with us there. And Rosetta Stone, uh, we had a number of uh, organizations that uh, said that a number of our members that said they would like to have the opportunity to use Rosetta Stone with our members. So they gave us a really good deal for that. So um, any of the members, they sign up by whatever May 1st and then they get the, you know, it's about half price going into the next year. Rosetta Stone just bought out. Uh a year and a half ago, Tell Me More, which is a Canadian company, so their content has got significantly more sophisticated for French language education. Yeah, good point, because uh, for a while there, they were really good up to about grade 10 was kind of the feeling in, around our members anyway. And then when they bought Tell Me More, then it was kind of like, yeah, this is really solid for right up to grade 12 now. So uh, that's uh, definitely worth noting. Uh, E-dynamic courses, I don't know if you're familiar with those, but what we were doing is we would have a lot of members, this was a little difficulty about being a collaboration too, was uh, we had a lot of members who would come with these specialty kind of requests and like, we would like, uh, you know, uh, world religions kind of course, or we'd like, so there were all these kind of outsiders and it, it's hard to uh, do those kind of projects where maybe one or two members say, yeah, that would be cool, and everybody else is kind of like, yeah, okay, so my money's going for it. They're a little pet project. And so it was better for us to say, um, you know what, we'll do all the stuff that 90% of you need to run a program. And then all those extra ones. So we went out looking for an organization that had some of those extra credit kind of, uh, you know, elective things that people would like. And eDynamic was uh, one of them. And actually, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the organization, but I contacted them down in, um, what is it, down in Dallas, Texas, I guess, and talked with the people down there. And they were kind of, you know, we need to work out something. So we started working it up. And I said, well, let me, we need to put you in touch with our, our boss. He lives in Calgary, and he's just moving to Kelowna. I was like, oh, he lives a block from me. So anyway, let's go over there. and. Yeah, it's weird, but anyway, so they turned out to be a, a good partner for us because they they have all those crazy one of kind of you know the philosophies and the yeah all those things Friends that science. you know. So when people come to me and they say, "Hey, we have this idea. We really would like you know we have a teacher for this particular course. We'd love to offer it." And and I go, "Oh, have you checked eDynamic? Because you can work with them." And so eDynamic gives us a a group price and, and um, people just go from there. Um, Wiris is an organization that they're the ones who do the math equations. So if you're uh, 
wondering how in an online setting do you get students to show their work in a math or a physics or a chemistry course. And that was a challenge for us for a long time and there were lots of little solutions that came up and none of them were very promising because they always sit back and you go, okay, so did that take the student more work to figure out how to technically get that on the screen than, it, than they're showing their understanding of the actual material? And yeah, usually it does and see so it kind of like, yeah, that's not a good solution. So anyway, finally Wyvers came along and, and theirs is pretty easy. They lay out their equations quite nicely. And so they're an organization from Spain. And so again, uh, a couple calls and yeah, they were eager to work with us and they've been giving us great deals over the last number of years. And um, yeah, Carlos even came over from Spain to check out Canada and come to BC for our last conference. And so they've been a great partner for us too. Um, and Zoom, which we're being recorded in. So some of you may be familiar with Zoom. Uh, for us in BC, Collaborate, Blackboard Collaborate is a product that we've used for a number of years. Um, but that's kind of coming to an end this summer. So a lot of the districts were asking around what's a good replacement. And so a little bit of research and we've determined that Zoom is a, quite a nice replacement. Um, so we had some teachers try it out and their feedback, they came back and said, yeah, this is way better except for these three things. Um, there was, uh, let's see, the, uh, the quick check mark X, um, the uh, jumping around to the breakout rooms didn't work quite as smoothly, and third was the Seeing private uh, being able to see messages. In other words, a teacher in a, an online setting like that is truly responsible for what's going on in the class, right? Um, and so if you can't see any of the stuff that's going on, that's a bit of a problem that you're gonna, it's gonna bite you eventually. So basically, yeah, we gave the Zoom folks a call and uh, it was great. They, they're quite a big organization, but their focus in the past has been, uh, you know, uh, industry. And so meetings at the, you know, commercial meetings and stuff like that. And so, they kind of sat back and said, yeah, yeah, we get why you would want that. And so, um, again, saying that they were representing quite a few people are looking for this kind of solution. Um, so, yeah, so they've already uh, updated with two of those features. And the third one, uh, just chatting with them the other day, they're aiming for having it done this summer so that we can all be ready to go into next year with it. And then, of course, they said that, yes, they will give us a... Uh, uh, membership price as well, we use the membership price. So anyways, uh, just working with groups, so you know, that's, it, it's not something that we're out there looking to do, it's just basically when uh, a number of districts kind of come to the consensus that, you know what, we're looking for a solution and we think we have one that would benefit everybody, and you start to ask around and everybody's like, yeah, and you check it out and that seems like the best solution for everybody, then we take the extra step. I mean, it's just one of the benefits of having a collaboration there, right? So we do what we can to help out the membership, basically. Um, another area that we head into, and because our, our stuff is developed in Moodle, we do have, in the past we've had, in BC, uh, we are definitely a WebCT or Blackboard from hist historically, right? Because that was all developed in BC. Um, but that's slowly transitioned out. So we are uh, a Moodle, we do all of our stuff in Moodle. And part of the uh, goal there is because Moodle is open source, if you want to transition to something else, you have access to everything, right? You can, there's nothing proprietary there. You can see everything and, and write your scripts all you want. Um, what we found is that we had a number of districts that held on to Blackboard for a while and a few on D2L. And I think, it, and so they would convert our stuff into their own platforms. Um, and that was their responsibility. We did Moodle and said it's open source, so you have access to you know, whatever you want to do with it. Um, and so I think pretty much everybody has kind of slowly evolved into the Moodle direction. Um, I think that there's one district that's still held holding on to D2L, but I think that's it. Yeah. So. Um, oh, and that was to talk about the LMS, but um, so because so many of our members use Moodle, pretty much everybody, um, 
we have uh, got into Moodle and done some fiddling around. And so one of the things that uh, a lot of people thought would be really cool is that uh, students can go into Moodle and see their grades, but mailing out their grades to them and their parents in a nice, clean sort of way was something that a lot of districts were saying, I'd love to get my teachers to every week send out an update, like a progress report. And so we made this little progress report block. And so any teacher can just load this. And so any member, you can take it if you want or whatever. You load it into your course. And then every week, you just type a little note there about what you want to do. That all of your students see that little note. And then you select all your students. And then you send it. And it'll automatically add all their information here. And then pull all the stuff out of the uh, Moodle gradebook and send it out to them and so you can see exactly when it was submitted and all that kind of stuff. So it allows you just to, every teacher to 15 minutes at the end of their day on Friday to update everybody, the parents, the counselors, the students, everybody all at once just click, click, click. Okay. So um, another one, so we built that one and it was pretty popular. And a, lot, a number of districts came back and said, okay, the communication thing's going well, so we have another idea. What about those students who don't log in for a long time? Like they haven't been into the course for a while. It'd be nice if we automatically had something to send out. Just if we didn't catch it right away, at least they get something you know, right away telling them. So this is a little login reminder. Again, it's just something that each teacher can load into a course. So they can just add log, that's it. And then they can send it in. They can type a little note, and, and it has a variable. So you can say uh, it'll use their name and the name of their course. So, dear whoever, you have not been in the course for more than, and you can select 10, 20, or 30 days. You know, it's up to you how much flexibility you want. And it will automatically send your little note to any student that has been out of that course for, you know, your 10 days, your 20 days, or whatever, right? So, um, again, that's just something that a number of people have asked for. And we, and from our point of view, it's just kind of the idea that, um, is this a good use of membership money? Um, yeah, okay, well I have a coder that can write this up real quick if I lay it out for him and, um, and yeah, enough people have asked for it that this is a good investment for everybody. So, you know, for 1200 bucks or whatever, they give another feature. And we have things like people who say, well, it's annoying if I want to change the password in a course for all my tests. I have to go in each one. Well, okay, we'll make you a password one. So it'll, you type in, you choose the course, you type the password, it'll do the whole course at once. And if you have quizzes in there that don't have a password, it'll skip over those ones as well. So it'll only replace passwords where there was a password in the past. Um, submission notification, if you're kind of like, uh, some of our smaller districts, they like having that notification. So if a student submits an assignment, it will automatically email them and tell them that there's been a new submission. But then in the bigger districts, um, you know, where you're dealing with a whole bunch of students and only two or three courses, that's bloody annoying, right? Because, yeah, you, I mean, you're going in there to mark. You know you're going to sit down and mark every day. You don't need your whole email filling up all the time. So um, what we do is, as a system, BCLN releases it with the notification off, but then we send this out for the smaller districts so they can just type in, uh, uh, this course, Biology 11, I want all the notifications on, click, click, and stuff. So then they can get you know, off of that. And then we have a number of development scripts and various things like that. Any questions? I haven't talked a lot here. Any questions at this point? You know? Okay. Um, oops. Being there, done that. Okay. Uh, just one last thing I'll bring up. Uh, the one other project that we always have going in the background with BCLN is. In the early days with the, um, the districts that were running online programs, uh, they were just asking for something to help manage their students. In other words, when a student shows up to them, uh, we have to uh, get them on record. We have to uh, make a Moodle account for them. We have to put them in the course or courses that they choose. We have to let the teacher know that they're there. The teacher has to keep updated with the grades. The secretary has to know once the students get to a certain point or their completion and all that kind of stuff is pretty hard to do, um, you know, paper trail or any old fashioned way of doing it, right? And so what we did was we built what we call a student management system and what it allows is it allows a program to say, uh, here's where you register for this course. 
here's all the things you have to check off and acknowledge before you're allowed into the course. Fill in your demographics, we'll make a record for you, we'll automatically put you in the Moodle course, we'll alert the office, we'll alert the teacher, they'll know that they're in the list, and then we'll keep track of you from then on. So the teacher, as they complete things, they'll update that list, they can put little notes in there, it can generate report cards from there because it'll pull the data from, from Moodle and archive it all and all that kind of stuff. So that's a system that uh, is fairly popular in BC because, um, you know, just we have the policies around uh, signing students up. Um, but, yeah, whether it's of interest outside of BC, I don't know. Um, but anyways, that kind of covers our, in the end, all we do is we say, um, we're out to serve the people who uh, you know need us in this province or uh, beyond. Uh, everybody chip in a little bit so that we have something to work with and tell us what you need and we'll involve your teachers and uh, teachers provide feedback so that we can continue evolving the courses and um, all these other little projects just kind of come up of the blue when somebody said we really need this. And, yeah I suppose BCLN if we got involved, we could probably make it better for everybody, so okay, we'll do it. And so that's kind of the stuff outside of the course development that we get involved in. So anything to add? No, I think I think Brent's given a pretty broad overview, pretty quick cool <coughs> one. Um, one of the things I think, you know, why we come to Alberta really, uh, for years and years, uh, we were coming to Alberta to pick your brains. And, uh, to get a sense of some of the neat things that were going on in Alberta, <laughs> and that's still occurring. But what's changed is that uh, this model in BC has, has taken off. We started off with four, uh, four school districts uh, just over 11 years ago, and we're now 61. Um, and the reason it's working is because it's a grassroots model. It's not a government uh, model. It is a teacher-driven model. It's practical. It works, and it takes a heck of a load off of teachers developing their own independent digital media. Um, so what this framework does really are the courses that we create uh, is in a starting place. And then my teachers go out and they grab this and say I don't like that and they add their elements to it and make it their own. So at the end of uh, a short period of time their course is the way they want it, right? Um, but the BCLN has created something that they can take and work with right off the bat. It's also structured so the quality is quite high, right? We've got a, a standard uh, approach to our development. We've got expectations of our developers. Uh, there's an expectation our courses look similarly, so they're familiar with students taking more than one course. And so we've done a lot of the uh, trial and error to get to the place where we're at now. And as Brent says, 20 years of development. So it's not like it's happened overnight. Um, and our goal really, uh, with uh, the encouragement of, of a number of people from Rocky View, including Dirk, I think just arrived, and uh, other colleagues within the province, is really to share share the wealth. Is this something that might work in in, uh, in Alberta? And we've heard from a lot of different groups that say, yes, it, it's needed. How do we go forward? The Moodle Hub, I think, does a great service in terms of collaboration and bringing a whole bunch of ideas together. This adds a little bit more uh, framework to what might then occur uh, in terms of some of the work in Alberta. And our goal is to take any members that want to be part of this and use those dollars, 100% of those dollars, to make those courses Alberta compliant. The BC uh, curriculum is about 80% congruent with Alberta, and that's because of the Western Canada Consortium, or I think it's called that, or something like that. Basically, it's a protocol agreement between the Western uh, Ministries of Education and BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. We also had calls from uh, Manitoba and into, into Ontario, but our goal isn't to create an empire. Brent and I both have full-time jobs, right? He's the DL coordinator in Kelowna. I'm district principal in Vernon. Uh, and we did this because we were spending easily $20,000 a year on development, each school district. Now I spend closer to about 10, right? And my teachers are happier for it because they've got something to start with, especially rookie teachers, right? Um, we're using it in blendedness in, in a lot of schools now too. So classroom teachers are grabbing these materials um, and using them to augment what they're doing at the classroom. And they're finding it to be hugely successful because kids can now go home and reference these things. They can do the practices. They can do the practice quizzes. Or 
the teacher aligns it with their course outline and they use it for their normal pedagogy. So really it's a toolkit and you can see some of the other neat ideas that Brent and the developers have been working on. The gamification uh, module that I just heard about on the way over here by the way. That was a project underway right now. And there's another one that they just, that they just completed, uh, I think it's completed yesterday you said or today Brent, the video analysis. Oh, uh, uh, right? Yeah, it started, yeah. but it'll okay. be next. It's still coming. Okay. So we're just looking for uh, uh, ways to share and grow the, the wealth because we see uh, an advantage of getting some of the great ideas in Alberta and sharing them back in BC. Any questions? Okay. Comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea, bad idea. <laughs> Sorry, I came in a little late. Oh, I'm on the camera. <laughs> You're on there. Um, so, uh, for us, I work for Rockview Schools, and much of my uh, role is supporting uh, teachers in Moodle. And um, we've this is our, I think, second year now with BCLN, and the uh, it, the ability for for me to give our teachers some sixty plus courses that are really well done, not necessarily 100% aligned, uh, is, is, I mean, it's outstanding. Um, so we have with, you know, really quickly we had a, now a resource that's not like Bob's best course at one of our schools. No, it's actually, you know, developed by other teachers elsewhere and we bring it in. And so we, we, we like removing that sort of personal sort of touch by, from some of our teachers bringing in some other content like this, and, and it's been fantastic. Um, yeah, I can only encourage people to, to look at this model. Um, even financially, it makes too much more sense. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're working with us right now. Yeah. My, kids Are you using really my, my kids really like it. Oh, good. Yeah. Really like it. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's worth pointing out that Dirk and I were chatting within the last couple of weeks, uh, just as far as uh, what could we do uh, better to, uh, you know, help out as we expand and, and, you know, possibly expand more into Alberta. And, um, yeah, our discussion basically went the idea that it's Alberta teachers are going to be best at looking through our stuff and saying, hey, you know, our Science 5 is actually covered mostly by your Science 5, but if you take this unit from Science 6 and put it in there, that would be, you know, a pretty good match. And, you know, Physics 11 is it's just missing this and this and, you know. And so if, so basically our discussion was the idea that, well, um, yeah, if you guys do a little bit of an alignment piece, then we'll take all the money that uh, any Alberta uh, group, uh, you know, puts in for membership. Like all the BC ones will continue building the videos and stuff that you have all access to anyway. But, but just to kind of get things off and going to help out, um, we just kind of, Bruce and I were just the, why don't we take every cent that comes in from the Alberta districts for now and just turn it around and, and grab those alignments and get people working on that. Now, whether we hire an Alberta teacher to do that, who's got a good technical background or, or grab one of our current developers, it doesn't really matter. Uh, whoever can do it efficiently is, you know, it's the you know, end justifies means in this case. And so, um, so basically, be able to, and if there's a couple uh, divisions, uh, you know, heading into next year, then we'll probably get to a couple of courses. If, you know, a, a dozen, then we'll get to a bunch more courses. So, um, you know, that's kind of the commitment, just to kind of try and include in, uh, everyone and, and make it as usable as we can for you. But, um, yeah, from our point of view, to continue developing, and we, we basically have our next couple of years financed and planned as far as, you know, the video development, the game development. We're going to carry on with that. And we're going to keep getting better. Um, and so the Alberta one, really, uh, we don't need that money to go into that pool. So we'll turn that around and just kind of uh, turn that back into uh, an Alberta-specific investment there. And, and that, I mean, we are, we are committed to, uh, to putting teacher time into the alignment work. Uh, walking the school test. Um, it's all a question of how much, I, uh, I suppose. But we definitely would like to see more, more schools or school divisions um, help us with that. You know, uh, the alignment part. When I when we show this stuff to junior high teachers, often they, it's not that important that 
pieces aren't aligning 100%. To, the, to them, it's more like a, another exciting resource. The high school people tend to want to have more alignment. Um, but um, it's way too much for one school or one division to stem all this on their own. Uh, and, and it's not sustainable either. Uh, a couple of years ago, we helped develop physics 22 units, and that was $10,000 on our part. You know, uh, for less than that, we get all these courses, plus the community that comes with it. You know, so. Yeah, the community is a big thing to mention as well. Like, all of the teachers uh, are part of a discussion forum where if some if people disagree with something and, and every every teacher uh, in the membership has a voice on what they disagree with and so uh, whenever we hire somebody to focus on a course um, part of their job is to like, come up with the new ideas review the curriculum but in that list is to go to that discussion board and address everything that's in there doesn't mean you have to agree with it doesn't mean you have to do what they say because they think it's kind of an outlier one, but you have to comment back, you have to get a discussion going, you have to open that dialogue and look for consensus. And so in, in that way, the courses don't end up being some person's pet project. They end up being a discussion among a lot of teachers, which I think is a big part of the buy-in you know, in BC is um, that uh, you know teachers feel that they're part of the evolution and those teachers who have been around for a while doing it they can go into uh, courses that they teach and point out some of their great ideas that ended up there right and so I, I think that's that's a big part yeah, of the model I mean, are we outside for it? no 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 I was I was going to add a comment but go ahead oh, yeah first. so last year I was fortunate enough to to attend uh, you know the BCLN annual sort of meeting or doing the DL conference and you know I walk into a room with hundred plus teachers from across the province and you guys had it set up so there were I think four big round tables you know and, and each table was led by one of your content developers who happen to be teachers and and there's like 20 25 teachers around this table who are all using these materials and they were giving feedback to the people who are writing <coughs> these courses you know uh, I you know the group I participated in it was incredible rich discussion you know, it was non non critical. Uh, it's like, why did you do this this way, or this works really well in my classroom this way? And we had these discussions there, and that was for a couple hours or something. To me, that's value as well. You, I don't want to send all my teachers to a site say, let's download everything and never come back. You know, uh, this continuous uh, continuous um, discussion around these these courses is just so valuable, and. Um, our development really is an evolution process. Yeah. Right? And uh, the key is the teachers, right? That's what it seems to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just want to mention a couple of things for observations of other jurisdictions across the country. So, in first of all, in, in the open source, open education resources, which these are kind of gardened open ed resources in the sense that the, the provincial government monies are not out there to licenses in Creative Commons world. Uh, but it is an agreed world within a certain group defined within that. Um, but the practice that, that uh, BC Campus does with their open textbooks, which has become a model in the post-secondary, is that they, the institutions provide the time for the faculty members to come together and they crowdsource what they want in this particular book and then people will write that textbook in actually three to five days. It's a team and they'll put it together, they'll send it out for feedback and the process, you know, so that's a critical part. And in K-12 world in Ontario, they're in consortia. Even though eLearning Ontario provides full courses and the LMS to schools without their cost involved, they're all paid for by the provincial government, anybody in Alberta listening, <laughs> uh, BC listening, um, they still collaborate and build courses. So they've got a consortium of like 22 boards and they build or augment those courses specific to the need, but again, crowdsourced from the school district. So this model is is done elsewhere with different expectated rules uh, or different resourcing. But I strongly you know, urge that, that the model be adopted and spread obviously across Western Canada because it fills a need, as Dirk, as you said. Yeah. I mean, you're going to spend the money, either you yeah. do it yourself or you do it collaboratively. So I, I think it behooves the Alberta folks, and I'm saying this now because <laughs> this is being recorded, 
really behooves the Alberta folks to sign up and get get involved in this because uh, it's it's a time tested, uh, well worn in different iterations, cool school model that's continued to keep going and never went away despite whatever provincial government or ministry tried to get involved or they tried to or side away. or sidetrack as the case may be. That's right. Yeah, and I think that. You know, sometimes you, at this point you kind of feel dumb because you feel like a salesman, and we're definitely not that. Uh, every every cent that comes into the system goes into development, and that's it. Like, it's a totally transparent model. Um, Bruce and I and, and all the developers are basically uh, just identifying the need at the time and trying to put the right people together. Uh, politics are outside of it. Well, can't say outside of it because we're... Uh, you know, working with the curriculum there, and and certainly the ministry in BC uh, sees us as a as a tool for them uh, from the point of view of they don't want to get involved in the uh, development, and so we found a model that works that and, and saves them money. So and we got a lot more moral, moral support. From yeah, them. and so but from the but they also see us as a tool as when they come up with a new curriculum. Um, they know that we're there encouraging that new curriculum and, and it's particularly with this, uh, you know, the personalized and the competency based one, blended learning is really the ticket. So looking at districts and saying uh, they're not needing textbooks anymore because of BC Learning Networks, which saves everybody money. Um, they're encouraging this idea that we have that otherwise sounds like an impossibility to most classroom teachers. They actually have the tools to, to make this happen. Um, so yeah, in a way, they, they uh, you know, leave us room in every one of their uh, ministry day all meetings and stuff like that. Um, not because, um, you know, there's any ownership there, but just because I think, I think in a weird sort of way, we avoid them and they avoid us to some degree. But on the other hand, they see us as a useful tool to help them, you know, uh, push the curriculum that they're interested in. And, and we're just there doing what we have to do to make a uh, better product for the people who sign up with us, and that's it. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess that's probably the end of it, unless there's any other questions. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope it was useful to you. Um, again, on the BC Learning Network site, feel free to jump in and make yourself an account, which will allow you to preview pretty much everything. Um, I'll, I'll probably change it back to the more, you know, the standard mode where only peak members sign up later tonight. So, so do that if you're planning to do it soon. Otherwise, you'd have to email me and let me know. But anyways, thank you. And Brent, so my contact information is on the website under uh, uh, about BCLN. Uh, oh, about BCLN contacts there. Yeah. And if you are interested, I think uh, the members area covers a lot of information, but. Uh, our uh, membership fees start at $3,500 and go up to $6,500, scaled by size. And that's just to make it as fair as possible. Um, and really, that's the money that you contribute annually to the consortium development costs. Yeah, so five grand in, you get about 150 grand worth of stuff. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and on behalf of the room, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>